Hey and welcome to today's jazz guitar lesson on pivoting with arpeggios. Now I made an arpeggio lesson a few weeks ago about the problem with arpeggios which was based around the idea of you know we learn them like this or something like this and then we struggle to do much more with them. We kind of go always for the root or don't really know how to create nice phrases with it. So if you missed that check that out link in the description but I'm going to put this A minor 7 on in the background here. Now if we took an A minor 7 arpeggio, the most predictable thing to do with it would be to play it in order. So that's going root, third, minor third, fifth, minor seventh, A, C, E, G. Now pivoting is simply, instead of going up for the next note in the, within the same octave, is you drop to the octave beneath. So instead of this, you go really simple but it's it's more interesting sound I think compared to so it's much more predictable than like something I used to practice for my piano teacher uh, so so what I'm doing here is I'm getting the root A here in the same place but instead of getting the minor third on the next string I'm going to drop an octave down here to the C then get the fifth then get the seventh so it's A C E G so you are still going up the arpeggio, but you're dropping for the third, then back up. And we could do, we could go up to the third as normal, then drop for the fifth, back up for the G. If we started on the third, we could go third, five, seven, root. If we started on the seventh, sorry, on the fifth, we could go five, seven, root. We start on the seventh, we're going to have to drop to the root. So, and these are all with just playing them in order, you know, because you're still playing them in order from the note you're on. We're still going like seven, one, three, five, but we're just dropping instead of going that would be in order, going up, we're dropping. Sounds pretty cool. So, those ideas were. interesting. Combine it with a few other things and I reveal my absolute favourite thing which I love to play which is if you do the first one I did which is but put the ninth and the flat nine before it go that's one of my absolute favourite lines really beboppy so the upshot of this is it's about varying how you practice your arpeggios. Do these kind of ideas with a good awareness of, you know, this can't just be five and seven, and there I'm referring to fret numbers and kind of tab based thinking. They need to be C, A, and you need to know that that's minor third back to root. So that you can find these things, you can hear these things, but these ideas will completely refresh how you're using arpeggios if you feel like you're kind of quite stale um, and you're kind of like oh it's a minor seven here we go to a d7 and you kind of feel like well how do i progress to what i hear from my favorite jazz soloist how, how do i take this forward and i keep saying this in lessons re recently but it's about just gradually tweaking how you're practicing things and, you know if you find yourself doing the same thing for a long time then you need to Rethink about how you're practicing it. Don't fall into bad habits of just doing the same thing all the time because you, you you know you obviously just get more of the same. So what I want you to do is pivot on your arpeggios. So think of pivoting as basically where you're changing octave. In this instance, we're dropping an octave to get the rest of the arpeggio. So practice suggestions. Get used to this on one chord first. Uh, you could use something like the freeze or a static backing track to help you do that. Then branch out to the two five one. So if we applied the same idea to a two five one, so let's go. Um, we start on the root and then we we pivot down to the third and go three five seven. We go A minor seven. Let's do it and D seven. Just a two five one in the key of G. So that was. some variation in rhythm, maybe some technique, maybe some chromatic passing notes, 
we could be well on the way to creating much more interesting than phrases than if we just went which is something you still need to be able to do but this is kind of the next step on from that playing everything in order so this whole thing can also apply to scales this is a really useful practice technique so instead of going c d e f g a b c with a c major scale let's pivot after the note f so let's go c d e f drop which instantly just sounds a little bit fresher a little bit more interesting so Pivoting, do it with your scales and arpeggios, get it in your practice routine, really useful way to get more from what you've already know. Uh, join me every Wednesday and Saturday for jazz guitar lessons. The PDF, the tab, the notation is all on my website, link in the description. I'll see you next time.